Welcome to how to get a sub page to talk with the parent page. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, today's video is actually about something that happened earlier today when we had an issue. Uh, and, and the issue was that, you know, when you have a part inside another page, you have a, when in, in the olden days we called it a sub form, but now I guess it's a sub page, uh, but you have a part inside another page. And something happens on that page inside the page, and you need to have the parent page do something. Um, and you know, back in the time, there's been a lot of tricks uh, to, to do this, uh, but, but in the cloud, um, a quick Google kind of uh, revealed that most of the tricks that we used to work doesn't really, it doesn't apply to, uh, to what we have now. Um, and we tried to do, there's an up, update pro propagation property where you can say that it's updated both ways. So when, when there's an update on, on the, on the, the sub page, the parent is also updated. But what if what's happening on the sub page is not an update and cure page start update is kind of having a lot of uh, issues, uh, especially around being able to create new uh, records and stuff like that. So I came up with a plan. So let's see if I can make this plan work. Uh, uh, this might be a MacGyver plan, and if you if you have a better plan, and start yelling at the screen uh, while I, I try to create this. Yell in the comments because this was the plan I could come up with, and uh, maybe there's something better. Uh, so, anyway, here's what I'm talking about. That. What, what we what we had in this case was that just by selecting a different line stuff sh should happen on on the um, on the header uh, but that's not an update we're not updating record just because we're navigating around um, so we had to do something else and and um, yeah let, let's uh, let's uh, let's let's start um, Let's start, and and let's start at the at the line. So if I can create a page extension um, lines, and this one will extend. Let's do sales order, sales order sub form because it's still not named form. Um, And, and what I would like in this case, so let's, the, the, the case from, from ISM would be that on after get current record. So whenever a new record is selected, I want to do something. Um, and no, this would be really cool if you can do something like this, but, but we can't. So I guess I'm already stuck, uh, but but so let's uh, really just keep everything one page here, just to uh, to be a rebel. Um, so let's extend the sales order. I guess just call it sales order. Um, and if we want to do something, uh, the only code that will you know run without a user doing something will be uh, will be an a, a, an event a, a trigger um, and i was actually thinking if if somehow i could rig page background task completed up to to, to do this uh, because we notice in a different states that if you have different sub forms they would different like fact boxes so I have page extensions and they that and each one had a page background task then it will actually trigger so comments below if you want me to do this thing with page background I'm not going to use page background task I, I think I have another idea here but 
that was the only one when looking at, at, at these things because on after get current record could get triggered by a update pro propagandation, whatever it's called, but, but that kind of messes a lot of things up, uh, even update faults, which we can't do in some cases because then we're not saving stuff. Um, so I think we're kind of stuck here too, unless we come up with some way for these two to talk to each other. And my idea was, my idea, my idea is that we create a control add-in. Uh, let's call it inter, what are we going for? Inter page communication, communication. Um, and in this control that in, I want to have, um, okay, so let, let's think about this. So if we add an event, say ping or yeah, we can do ping from sub page as an event. And I guess then the procedure called ping parent page. Then we could add this one. So let's go back up to the lines and go to the layout. And we will add last at content. So I didn't, I did not give this one a size at all. So it's kind of just there, but I don't think it has to, I don't know what the size is. Maybe we need to set it to one. Um, but here I could add a user control because you create a control add in and then you add it, then it's a user control. This is still uh, communication. And this is what is called inter page communication. We always need to add, a, add application error. So even though with BC22 and up, where you can put an application area on top of the the, uh, the object, you, we can't do that here. Uh, so in a page extension, we got to put application area on. Um, but now I have well. In this case, actually, okay. Sorry, let's do this. I don't need to think about it. So let's. Do the same thing. Wow, come on. On the sales order. Okay. So here we can now say trigger ping from sub page. Uh, message hello from sub page. So this is what we need to trigger. So again, Code running while you're clicking on it, have it has to be a trigger. Everything else is only going to get called either by a trigger or because somebody clicked somewhere. Um, so the task is to to trigger this. And, and if we go up here at the, the, the line, now we could say on after get record, which is because somebody clicked somewhere, so we can do curb page dot what is called dot com dot pink parent page. And in and, and you see where I'm going with this now. These two are two completely independent control ends setting two different in each uh, each is sitting in, so in its own iframe two different places on the page but I want them to talk together and I think I can do that um, so what we need to do we need to go here and then we, we need to say scripts I guess Insert page communication.js. That's a squiggly line because this file does not exist yet. But what about I say new file and we add one called this. We save, we compile, we are happy. Well, <laughs> I guess that depends on what we put into this one.
So what we know is that we need a function in here called, and we don't get tooltip, it's called pink parent page. Um, and so, so all JavaScript, if, if, if I do, you know, so let's, let's run this. Let's run this. So hit a five. So the way JavaScript works in Business Central is that it runs in a browser, of course. Uh, but it also, it runs inside the iframe. But but the the model in so here's the here's the sales order um, and let's see what this one goes. Uh, let me see if I can get this to dock somewhere useful here. Aha. Uh -huh. Um, I don't see anything happening here. Um, let's see why. So I was actually pink parent page. Um, let's see what we have. Pink parent page. Ping parent page on after get current record of sales order subform. And let's just make sure that sales order is page 42. And I think before I started the video, I told this one to start page 42. Okay, so we are in the right spot, but we are not getting anything useful here. Why is that? Uh, let's see. Uh, it's really, it's really this one that's that matters. On after get current record. Uh, has has that anything to do with whatever I am? When? No, 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 no. I'm I'm okay. Let me not type in a simple to order. Ah. So I would have expected to see my, did I do something stupid here? Okay, now you're yelling at me. And and I, I this is, this, oh, so here, here's the weird thing. Okay, so let me, let me explain the problem here. This is, this is really, really weird that, okay. So, so the bug is, and, and I am sorry to everybody who's yelled, well, this should be, Console log. Right. That that's the right thing. But why don't I see anything that is wrong with this thing? So somehow in some cases errors that happen on control that ends are getting suppressed. So I could have done the following. Say try. Let's put this in here. Wow. Uh, we can format it and then we can go catch e and then let's do console.log uh, e so errors in javascript are sometimes suppressed somehow so you don't see them unless you actually go and uh, and and lock them so now we got test that was what I expected to do. And we got a reference error at pink parent page, uh, of course, because lock is not defined. So that was, that was stupid. Anyway, um, turn that into a small lecture. So so sometimes if, if you're, JavaScript, you're writing JavaScript and, and nothing happens, nothing is outputting, and it's just weird, um, use this little trick. Um, that has been very helpful for me. Anyway, now I remember console.log. Um, but 
let's talk about the DOM for a second. So, so the way the a, a page is working here is that there's a big structure. Um, and what we could do actually here, instead of doing this, we could print out the variable called window because that's somehow actually helpful. Um, So now it printed out window. I, I know that is, let's see if we can make that bigger. So let's turn this into the, the phone. Okay, so we can see window here. Um, but if we look at this, so this is the, this is the, the, the iframe that the, the control add in. Um, so in, and we can see here, there's a function called ping parent page. The problem is if we just call this one inside our iframe, we are just gonna get a, uh, um, we're just gonna get a trigger here, which is pointless because we want this trigger on, uh, on the other one. Um, but we can see here that if we go look at this window and we go, let's go to the letter P. There's a lot on that, on the window.parent. That is, that is the main, that, that, that's, that's this thing. That's Microsoft's page. So window.parent. And now we can see that, it, let, let's actually find the, so now we have, here we have something called frames. Uh, and there, there are, there are, there are, there are some. Um, and if we look at this one, uh, I don't think that's the one. Let's look at number two. Oh, hang on. See here we got pink parent page. And let's look at number three. We also got pink parent page. So what we need to do is that we need to travel into the one that's not us. Uh, and then we need to convince JavaScript that we are, the JavaScript running is actually running inside that iframe. So we can call invoke on, on the business central event so that we can trigger the, the event in the right framework, uh, in, in, in the right iframe, in, in, in the right uh, control engine, I guess. Um, but we can do that. We, we can, we, we, I think we can do that. Um, so we can just ignore this for now. Um, so let's, uh, let's do for var i equals zero while i is less than window. Now remember the one window dot parent dot frames dot length i plus plus so now we're looping through all the frames um and then i guess what we need to do is say that if windows so window is us so when if window dot frame elements of so, so window is what's sitting inside but it's it's sitting inside the frame element from the parent page. So window.frame element is the frame element of where this originated, the sender, in this case, the lines. Um, so if this one is not equal, the one we get from window.parent.frame i.frame element. Then we are sure, I mean, maybe we don't need credit parentheses here. Then we know that we are not just looking and finding ourselves. At least we are finding a frame that is not ourself. Um, but remember, let's go back here. Remember that we saw that this one has the pink parent page function. So we can, I think we can say that if, uh, window dot 
parent dot frame. Uh, I think this one actually, hang on, frames, sorry, frames, frames I dot uh, frame element, and then we need to have the uh the window the content of and then there's actually something as simple as called content window uh if we go look here we should be able to see uh, where is it frame element and inside frame element we have content window so that's that's where we need to be to be really inside the window so in that the context we need to call this in so uh, so if but but hang on hang on so i was just bounce so we can say that if it has this one so it's not null So, well, I guess these lines gets a bit long. Okay, so we look through the frames. We see that we're not finding ourselves. We're not finding the, the frame where we're calling from. But we're finding another frame that also have the pink parent page function. Then what? Then now we need to... Now we need to call something in the context of that frame. So I think we need to create a, let's call it real ping. And here we'll go Microsoft.dynamics.nav.invoke.existability method. And what was our function named? It was called ping from sub page. There you go ping from sub page um, would mean that now we should be able to do window dot parent dot frames I dot frame element dot content window dot real ping so now we're calling this in the context content context I guess is the right word here but but in from the perspective of, I don't know what the right word here is, this one. Uh, uh, no, uh, I guess uh, I, now it's either what could go wrong or hold my beer, F5. Did I miss something? Wakey, wakey, we got a page. I select a different line. <laughs> Hello from sub page. Okay. Hello from sub page. So I'm, I'm doing a non update based operation down here. I'm executing L code, but I'm not doing anything that will trigger. Uh, and well, now the, the, the message do message everything messes everything up but but that doesn't really matter in this case it actually works what happens if we go into edit mode here well, it works so if i go and create a new line so now here's the problem and now the maybe not huh that works Okay, so in this case, it's it's a bit aggressive, I guess. So we could pass. We we, we could actually do this. Potentially a slightly better. What if we 
we pass a line number in here and we get a line number out here uh, so what we do we need to do we do need to get a, a line number here and we need to pass that to this one so this one gets a line number and we need to put a line number here now there's lots of code here so this one see what we can do we can say trigger and then we can ask it to recreate it so we can, hello from sub page and um, current line number integer and then if line number is different from current line number then Turn line number equal line number here, and we end that. Then we need to go up here and say reg dot line number. Should we put the line number in here? There we go. So now we'll only actually right now do the message. If we do change to a a a, a different line, so the, the challenge with but what happened right now is that the the uh, get current record is trigger happy. So sometimes you get that um, in cases where you don't need it. Hello from sub page thousand. Okay, that's fair enough. Two thousand. So oh, thirty thousand here. And I do stuff and I add stuff and things are happening and the inventory and I go up to this line, boom, we get um so so what is what what's the downside of this? Downside is that we do have uh, we do have now there's there's two user controls sitting here uh, somewhere uh, maybe they do have a size right there's a lot of space right here so maybe I really would love to have a, a setting saying uh, 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 zero size equal true. Um, or, or like, like we have a repo, we have processing only, so it could be code only. Right, that would that would be nice. I think we can say uh, mini maximum maximum height one, maximum width one. Let's see how, if that looks just, a come on BC, you can do this. Yeah, yeah, now we are, no, is that still us? So here, what we can do is that we can fire up ye old, uh, Yeah, you see here, it's still actually filling up useless space. Um, I think uh, there is a way. We, it can be smaller. I'm sure of that. I can't remember if um, minimum height. I think you need to set everything to one. There, is, there is a trick. Uh, how does shrink? True vertical shrink. True. What else do we have? Uh, horizontal stretch, vertical stretch. Uh, I don't know if that's really needed. Let's let's see if the, I'm just adding all of them, so I have no idea which one is the right one. We 
the R on that one, that is good. Interesting. And we have the same thing on here. Yeah. Okay. So um, um, we all, we're already over time here. So uh, somebody yell at the screen loud enough and remind me what I'm missing here. Oh, it's the, ah, I think it's the requested one. There you go. Okay. One very last try. Requested. That's probably the one. Let's see. Uh, come on, come on. Yeah, now it looks better, right? So now it's 17 pixels here and 17 pixels here. But it would still be nice to have have a uh, a, a setting saying that I'm not, I'm not going to do any visual stuff no visuals uh so i just need the smallest possible iframe to to run some code in uh, and then i'm happy anyway we passed the half hour so the idea is that get ui to talk to each other and and misuse the control at end to be the communication channel by uh by going out of one iframe and into the other iframe and, 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 and click on something. Um, seems to work. Uh, it might be doable with the background task, page background task, just because the one, the, the, the event is triggered. If you have two things, you have two different um, page extension on the same page uh, and and you that both have the on complete it will trigger in both of them so that might be a fluke actually the, i don't know if that's that's supposed to work that way but that's what's happening right now so if you have in you have so if you have two page extensions to the same page and they each have a page background task then and you fire off the page background task, both of them you get each completed trigger trigger twice. Um, so maybe that's possible. Um, anyway, this video has already been too long. So check this other one out. Uh, there's probably more ale hacking in here because that's what's on the channel. So uh, go check that out. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.